today something a little different but it's still uh, animated is a uh, hot dog condiment holder it doesn't work right it's supposed to move a door and it is made by the original hot dog condiment holder it is made by fundamental tool sorry fundamental to LTD uh, T O O, not T O W O. But the sound works. Hot dogs! Get your hot dogs! Get your mustard relish! Get your fixings in! <laughs> so apparently we know what goes in here. I'm going to turn the sound back off. Uh, there's a door right here, it's supposed to close and open. It's stuck open, and you can hear the mechanism, so it's probably got a broken gear. Uh, there is a oh, eight screws plus the one for the batteries. This thing runs on four double A's. See right here. I picked it up. I changed the batteries because the battery that was in here had exploded. Uh, I didn't clean it all the way. I just was enough to make contact to see if the door would work. I picked this up for. Oh, there we go. Turn it the right way four and a half dollars at Goodwill. It was actually cheaper because I used the coupon. So I got 20% off that. And what's nice about this is it comes with its own little uh, storage cart for all the pieces. You're going to take off. Try and fix this. I don't know if there's any screws under the feet. It doesn't feel like it. it doesn't look like it. I'll stick out the other four. Basically, remove all the screws you can see. Could do this with a screwdriver. It's just slower. So trying to speed up how fast we get into these things. Start using some uh, power tools. A little flashlight look inside. Okay, the feet don't attach to anything. clips. There's a boss. And there's a door. There we go. So there's your hot dog. So the plastic is notched. It's fat at the bottom, thin at the top. So it slides down and it pops out and locks in. So just set the one bottom off to the side and see if this side is the same way. Push it down, pop it off. There we go. They have the switch wires looped and taped to the dog right here. Does the switch come off? I just don't want to break the wires since it's a multi-switch. Now there should be enough slack. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. screws that are deep inside which are going to require a non-power screwdriver. I figure this might be nice to have on a you know as a novelty for a barbecue get together a grill where you can turn the sound off so it's not so obnoxious and it'll keep your stuff covered and it's kind of like a timer you have I don't know I think it's like five or six seconds before it will close the door so how fast can you get your stuff 
But somebody probably turned this into Goodwill because the door didn't work. And, well, I like to fix weird stuff. three screws out. Get the rest out here. No, no screws, just some trash. together as well. I'm just making sure these last couple of screws don't have a thread or two sticking in. Nope. I bet you it's these screws here. I thought these screws were just for the door. I bet you these little guys right here are holding it together. In which case there's eight screws. speaker. Yep, it's caught on the speaker. So there's the inside. There's the simplistic mechanism. You got the motor drive right here and then the gear. We have the switch. There's actually more than one switch in here. There is one, two, three switches. They're all tied together. You can kind of see right there the bars. So that way, no matter where you press, you're guaranteed to activate it. Uh, it's a little cheaper way than making a, like a, a long piezo contact or something of that nature. Uh, let me check the door gear. Doesn't spin on the shaft and looks like I have all my teeth. So I'm going to assume the problem's right here on this uh, drive gear from the motor. Put the batteries in. And watch the motor. Sounds like the motor's working. And I think it's just got a broken gear. Oh yeah. There's a chunk of the gear missing. I can see it when it's turning. for right now is it kept going back and forth so either it's pressing the button from its own weight or it has a micro switch sensor which I do not see meaning it knows when the door is open or closed here's your circuitry the capacitors look good resistors look okay the blob chip is standing up right here on this board right there kind of diode and some transistors pretty basic and the components all look good. The capacitors, you would expect to maybe see bulged or leaking if this was used outside. Uh, you have your different wires coming off that run at different voltages. So you have your hot and your negative, and you have another hot here. 
So this is running off of two batteries, which is three volts, and this is running off of probably all six batteries, or four batteries, which would be six volts. Very common on a lot of units where they split the power to run different components. And I'm sure part of the blob chip, because I don't see a sound chip on here, now part of this blob chip probably controls the speaker. Uh, similar to like the Limax, where they'll have uh, this, the sounds, whether it's voice, music, or both, are on the blob chip, but they use an amplifier chip for the actual speaker itself. This one doesn't appear to have it unless it's on the bottom side of the board. And this is a, looks like a standard 10 tooth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it is broke. Yeah, it's, it's, it's split. When it's spinning, let me see if I can, can I open this thing once I find the break? Now this is longer than most of my 10 tooth gears. So I'll either have to make sure it's lined up perfectly or I'll have to double them up and make sure that the teeth are lined up. We have a broken 10 tooth. And that is a 10 tooth with a large hole. Okay, so that's the right one. Let me get a little closer to the camera. You can see the size difference. So. on. Just making sure the motor's tight, the box. Well, let's open the box. There might be another broken gear inside. I have a funny feeling there is based on the sound it made when I pushed the gear on. Because this has a worm gear. The motor is actually sticking in sideways. It's right here facing this way. But the shaft is going out the other way. So it has to have a, a worm gear to change the direction. So, the worm gear is right here, and it's taking the motor, changing its direction, and then going through a stepper gear to change its torque. So let's inspect these gears and make sure none of them are bad. Uh, this gear has a cracked nose. Is it slipping? This is one of those step motors, which I've been finding a little bit more often in the Limax and the Parma 56 pieces. I'm checking the 10 tooth gear on the motor. It looks okay. The worm gear. Looks good. And the transfer gear, which... Also looks good. Now I just need to adjust the height of this gear 
I'm going to put the shaft on the bench and then push like so. And this gear, when I pushed it in, I actually slid the gear back. That was the clunk. So if if you have this, which I'm sure there's not too many out there that do, um, and this gear breaks, you probably want to put the gear on the way I'm doing it now versus the way I did it originally, so you don't force it through and possibly snap the other gears inside. I thought it would have been on a solid shaft. I was wrong. It's on a floating shaft and it slipped. So let's put this back together. Line up the teeth. Whenever you put a gearbox together, you know, reassembly, and it doesn't line right up, just move the gear until the teeth mesh. Don't force it because you'll break the gear. You know, you'll break a gear. Whether it be the one you replace or another one you're going to have to replace. I'm going to stick two screws in just to hold the box together to put the battery in it and make sure that it uh, actually functions. If you don't want to put the screws in it, you can hold it with your fingers, but sometimes, even though it's only running on battery, whoops, the torque is uh, strong enough to open the box on you. a little bit of pressure with my finger to see if I can get the gear to slip and it's not. So let's, uh, let's reassemble. I think because I'm rocking the door it's, it's setting off the switches. because the push button is right here, causing the motor to engage. this strap you don't have to take all the way off you can just take one screw off and just pivot it drill So you can technically just swing this out of the way. Taking it off though just makes it easier, but you have a chance of losing both screws. Okay. Let's see if the door actually works. And make sure it's timed right. I'm assuming it would default to the closed position. You know what they say about assuming. No, it can't close the door. So Let's pull one of the batteries.
some lubrication to it in these little joints. Let's see if that helps. The motor's not slipping, it's just not spinning. So it might be a weak battery or it just needs some lubrication. This is just some generic uh, grease. Comes in little packs. Just gonna rub some on where the where it slips. So And this stuff is hydrophobic, which is nice. Uh, it doesn't break down in water. So if you spilled, I guess, your juices from your condiments in here. But at the same token, let's see if there's a chip on the bottom side of this board. Because if this works, I'll probably just screw it back together uh, to, to run the speaker. Nope, only thing on the bottom of the board is solder pads. So yeah, the uh, the blob chip is doing everything. It's actually pretty loud, I'm surprised. Come here, a little screw. We go. So, we just needed some lube. It needs to be clean. I mean, it's dirty, nasty. It's, it's good well. So, you know, what do you expect? But it functions. So, let's, uh, Get the important stuff back on here, which is getting all the sides that have the wire connections back into place. Just to hold it for a moment so I can run some of the screws in. I know there's two screws underneath I need to tighten. I just want something to uh, rest it in. I don't put any stress on the switch wires.
and apparently the shorter ten tooth isn't a big issue, most likely because um, they just used a large gear because that's what the kit came with when they bought their gears. So it's very possible it's nothing special. As long as you can get the teeth to mesh and you're not off center. I just centered it on the spline or knurled part of the shaft when I pushed it back together. I was using the bench top for back pressure. I am going to loop the wire. I'm just not going to tape it on. There's that. Looks like all the screws are the same, so you probably can't really screw them up. a pretty tight fit. Sometimes if you buy stuff from Goodwill or a thrift store, you can fix it if you really, really want it, sometimes. And if you don't, and you can't fix it, you can always put it back together and return it in most cases. Or you can fix it, return it, get your money back, and the next person that buys it will have a working unit. hand screwdriver. I don't want the torque of the drill to snap the plastic. I have no idea. 1999, so this thing is 22 years old. And plastic gets brittle. like about this is the uh, doesn't have an off on switch it's always on so if you store this somewhere and you leave the batteries in it or you take it to a, a picnic and it keeps pressing that button it's going to constantly do that 
Now, it is sticky. They had this thing wrapped in tape when I got it. It's, that's why everything's sticking to it. So it's going to have to get scrubbed down. I'll use um, isopropyl alcohol uh, to clean all the nasty residue off. Now that the door is closed, I can also clean whatever the heck this white sticky stuff is too. They were using the tape to hold the condiment drawer in. I don't know if you can get your condiments that fast. <laughs> what is that? One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. So it's about five seconds. It's pretty damn quick. You better have your spoon on the ready. Hot dogs! Get your hot dogs! Get your mustard relish! Get your fixings here! It's basically the length of time it takes him to say his little spiel. I'll just turn the volume back off. So, if you have a the original hot dog condiment holder from 1999, approximately, because I'm sure they had it maybe two years or so, from Fundamental to LTD, um, and it doesn't open and close a door anymore, that's how you replace it. A standard 10-tooth gear. You can get them on Amazon in a pack. It's like $6 for a pack of 20 or 25. Um, that's literally what they're called, 10-tooth. They come with different size holes. Uh, I think this is the 2 mil hole. That's why it fits on the screwdriver shaft. Um, whereas I also get them with the one and a half mil hole because some of the other animated projects I do have two different sizes. But 10 tooth gears are very common. Even that tall Jemmy, uh, six and six foot tall animated figure, all of them that have the animatronics have this little 10 tooth gear. It's a very common gear. So uh, you can buy them in multi-packs. The difference is, is this one's taller, as you saw. It's about one and a half times taller than the one I put in. Um, if you can get away with using the shorter one, I would. But you can search for heights. You just may not find it on Amazon. You might find it on other websites that sell pieces. Most of the time, you cannot buy them singularly. Everything has to be bought in uh, packages because it's not cost-effective, of course. So... Yeah. There you go. That is the repair. Now it just needs cleaning of the hot dog condiment holder. I'm gonna clean it all up and maybe uh, take some black paint or sharpie and darken up the press again. Voila. And there's nothing on this side. So thanks for watching. Until the next one.